this is how you start starting business in Cameroon because you look at the, the issues around and start start small because people like i want to raise big capital start small we'll go into capital but if you get the capital and without the knowledge you get into debt yeah write that down if i get capital without knowledge i'll get into debt i'll get into trouble i'll start running start small so that you understand what you are doing and that is what will teach you how to do everything in, in csdp where we are going one step at a time if you start without knowledge understanding the business you will get into debt really fast and you start running away from your creditors don't be in a rush to talk about money first of all can you come up with a prototype a sample of what you want to serve your community that product or service so people when we are talking about this project the very first thing people are asking or some people are asking is how can i get money and that that question for me, I've never asked that question in my life. I mean, like meeting the most successful people in my life, I've never asked that question. It, it, it is just different, right? It's, it's paradigm shift. Uh, when you want to start something big, the last question you could ask, even if you meet a big man or somebody that you think you can get inspiration from, the last thing you should ask is give me money or how do I get the money to do that? The vision should drive you more. Talk about the vision in a way people will start thinking like, but how much will it cost? You don't, you don't have to focus on the money because that's the mindset. When you focus on the money, how to get the money, how to use the money, all of a sudden you restrict even your own thinking. I got at some point and I, I, I told my wife, I don't want to see what is in the bank account. At that time, I was pursuing a, a, a business plan that it was really, really time consuming. I needed a lot of energy, needed a lot of money. And so I, I, told, I don't want to look at what is in the bank account. I want to be focused on this project. And if I'm looking at the money, I'm like, oh, I just asked, can we pay our rent? She said, yes. I said, can we pay our bills? She said, yes. I said, let's go. And that was the only question that I asked at the end of the month to understand how I'm making my moves. And she says a yes. And I'm like, let's go. Let's go. And, and guys, having that creative state of mind to not be focused about money so that I can walk and think creatively helps. And that is the kind of energy that I want everyone in this group. You will see great things that you'll be able to build if you adopt this kind of mindset. So what is going to restrict most people on this, on this entire movement? Most people will not succeed or will fall on the road. Number one is developing this moral authority, this kind of mindset that you believe that you are the one called to bring about that change. If you don't believe that you're a nation builder leader, that you're a leader, you've been called, you are chosen, you're special. When Jesus Christ uh, was picking up his disciples, some people expected those with some degrees, expected those with some uh, qualifications. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the individual, their heart, and their love for the nation. That is what matters to me. Any other thing will train it. We'll train, we'll train people with skills and everything to go on ahead and build businesses in the seven industries. But what I am focused about right now is your heart. Do you love that country? Do you want to be better in your own life? That is my focus. Number two is coachability. And write this down. Being able to be coachable. Follow instructions. Like if we say go through the book, go through the book. Those who've gone through the book, their language is different. The way they, they are thinking right now is different. Go through the books. By the time we are done with all the books, you will show up a different human being. And if we are taking it to the next step, you will be engaged. You will contribute. You will do something great, even for your life, your family, your business, which is what I'm focused about, like your personal life. So coachability is a big one. Like if you're trying to help someone to do something, the first thing they start, like they have an opinion. This is how I think it should be. I'm like, okay, if this is how you think, then life would have been better for you already. You, you don't need my help. They're like, okay, this is how I think I should do it. If that is how you think you should do it, then life should be better for you. You don't need my help. And I'm like, okay, goodbye. And, and, that, and, and I've closed a lot of people like that. I don't waste time with people who want to come around and tell me this is how they think it should be. I said, then you know what is right. Go ahead and do it and get the results and make your life better because you don't need me.
you can't call, people call me sometimes from Cameroon and no question. Some people are even running ministries or doing uh, am amazing things in the community. They call me and they don't ask no question. Like, what have you seen in this country that these people are doing to be successful that most of us desire to travel to? What have you seen? Because most of my time in the state, I've invested in knowledge more than I've invested pursuing money. That is why I can talk in different, I can talk in different fields, understanding the global trends, understanding where the world is going. All of this didn't happen by chance, is because I desired knowledge. Like King Solomon, when he went before God, his desire was give me wisdom. And God said, Because you've asked this, I, I'm gonna give you fame, I'm gonna give you riches. Do you guys see the principles? And that is that's what guides my life and my thinking. From the Bible to seeing what works around, first thing, what do you want? The knowledge. Now there are courses we have provided. Get the knowledge first. King Solomon, because you have desired this, I'll give you every other thing you are you didn't even ask for. So, so that, that is it. Good questions is what will transform your life. When you meet any great individual that is successful, asking good questions, like how did you get here? When you were at my level, what were you thinking? If you had the kind of money I have in my bank account right now, what kind of investments will you make? Right? Like over 81% of young people from the age of 18 to maybe 21, they want to choose a career path in Cameroon. The first thing they are thinking about is what they are passionate about. Read all the blogs in Cameroon. What is mostly written every day on those blogs? Can someone turn on their microphone and answer that question for me, please? What are the people, the young people sharing every day on blogs, on Facebook in Cameroon? Yes, sir. Uh, um, okay. Yes, go ahead. Pastor yes. King. Yes, sir. Majority of the things I would think most of the bloggers are sharing in Cameroon is comedy. Comedy. Okay. What else? Uh, yes, go ahead, Pastor. Yes, uh, the first thing that I have discovered that most of the Cameroonians are entertaining is entertainment and comedy. Okay. And then the next thing that I discovered that most people are moved. Anytime I see it on media, it's about religion. Okay. They share most of the things that happen in religion that are bad, not the ones that are good. Okay. For example, I will bring some of the platforms that are popular in Cameroon. Yes. Even DW, I know this is not a Cameroon uh, platform. If he has to share something about religion, he will always say a negative one. So in Cameroon, you discover that, for example, Mimi Mifo is a very popular platform in Cameroon. So if she wants to share anything, most of the things she say about the church are things that cannot edify, only things that are emotional. For example, Cameroon News Agency, they also share it. The only platform where I'm allowed to see is this man working with the, with the, this TV station, um, Mr. Kum Leonard. So yes. I, I discovered that most of the people, they say that nudity, most of the things I see is number one, nudity, comedy, and religion. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so that, that's it, right? So my question again is, do you think those things can transform a nation? Uh, all this content that they're sharing, it cannot help change Cameroon. Like I said, 81% of young people will choose their passion. There's this common saying, following your passion, follow your, I don't understand what that means, but uh, that is a common saying, follow what your heart tells you. But the Bible reminds us that the heart is the heart is, is deceitfully wicked. And and what I'm trying to say, we have to we have to follow what works and not what our heart is telling us. We have to follow what will change our nation, not what our heart is just basically saying to us. Look at what works in your, your country. For instance, if invest these are the things investors are investing in. Last time I, I made a video about the things that people uh, that Cameroonians, businesses that Cameroonians should start because those are industries that are very productive. So even with this trend, guys, investors are investing in agriculture. People who have their money in America or foreign investors, they put their money in, in, this, in the same industries that I've outlined. 
Another thing that you realize is, is that most young people are not in these industries. So this is evident that our economy will struggle if we continue the way we are going. And some of those will think like, oh, they want to benchmark their entertainment industry with Nigeria. That is a common trend within Africa. And it cannot help us build roads, build houses, build companies, build businesses, tech businesses. So uh, this is how you can understand your landscape and be able to find hidden opportunities. Because there are three mindsets here that I want to explain to you guys. And this is going to help you have perspective in Cameroon. Okay? Number one is convention. Convention is what everybody already knows. Everybody knows about the kind of music or knows about the kind of agricultural product they should make or, or should farm. Convention. What everybody knows. And if you want to start a business, you need to look for a business where there is low barrier to entry. It could be even agriculture. You don't just step into the general landscape of agriculture. What is the sector within agriculture that there is low barrier to entry? The music business or entertainment business is very saturated, even ministry. Now you have to rebrand yourself, even as a pastor, the way you position yourself as a pastor. You, you might even think of niching down as a pastor, like what? Well, yeah, you got to niche down. Who are your target audience? Even as a pastor, like I'm serving uh, the, 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 the basic example that I can put to stretch this point is, I want to serve maybe people that look like me. Maybe they are married. Maybe they have kids like, like myself and they are trying to build a life with their spouse. So maybe they are running a business or they have a job. You start looking for that audience because even when you are using illustrations and examples as to how ministry is relevant to their lives, they can understand. If I'm talking about my kids here, if you're married here, you're within this age group, 40 and below, you can relate really fast. Why? Because I'll talk about my kids' behavior, talk about what I'm doing with my wife, talk about what I'm doing with my children, talk about how I'm doing with business. You can relate. And, and so that, that might be something that you start considering, like I need to niche down and have a specific message that targets my audience. And, and these are things that I had to learn, learn the hard way. And, and so like, okay, I want to just target everybody. No, you, you got to niche down. So convention is what everybody knows. And most people are, tr are stuck here because they think everything is already so there is nothing else that they can tap into or make money with or grow and expand their lives because everything is known already right all the money on earth has been made already there's no money that we can make out of the money that we already have on earth and so everybody most people are stuck here in convention even in our community a lot of people are, are they're stuck with conventional thinking even our traditions that are out some of them are outdated but we are stuck with them because of convention what we know the second is mystery. Mystery is what we do not know and will never know. The weatherman can explain why the rain fall, but I don't know actually how the rain gets to fall on a certain day. They can observe it and say it's gonna fall at this time, but why does the rain fall? And can you even stop it? No, when earthquakes occur, do you know why and can you stop it we can explain it but you cannot stop uh, the earthquake from happening is, is this making sense are you guys hearing me i, I want engagement yes yeah. yeah 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 we're getting you yeah, yeah go ahead so, so yeah so how the world was created god knows we do not know we read in the scripture and we are being told as to how the world was created. God made the world. There are some certain things. We don't know what it took to make the world. And, and so there are certain things that are mystery and we will never know. And, and that is why some people try to uh, maybe find out things that is beyond their imagination and they get stuck in life because they feel like they can uncover mysteries. There are some things that are mysteries but you you can never ever figure out what they are right 
So, and that is very, very important. And then the third is sacred. And, and this, is, this is very, very important. Sacred are things that you can find. And what we are doing here with CSDP is a sacred. And if you want to obstruct old patterns, you, you need a sacred to observe that same problem and come up with a different strategy and look at it like, can we come up with a movement like this uh, that can be able to help individuals come out of poverty and obscurity and be able to penetrate a system that everybody has looked at and said, there's no way to break this. This is a secret. Now, there are human secrets and they are natural secrets. When you hear about scientists going into the ground and trying to do some explorations or people who are using medicinal plants to treat people or new ways of helping people uh, maybe see the world differently all of those are scientific experiments and they have to do with natural sacred now there's human sacred a classic example of this can be for instance all people thought about was how to drive their car around. If you have a private car, you go to work and you come back home and, and that is it. Now, somebody looked at that same vehicle that you have. This is how you start starting business in Cameroon because you look at the, the issues around and start. Start small because people are like, I want to raise big capital. Start small, we'll go into capital. But if you get the capital and without the knowledge, you get into debt. <laughs> yeah, write that down. If I get capital without knowledge, I'll get into debt. I'll get into trouble, I'll start running. Start small, so that you understand what you are doing. And that is what will teach you how to do everything in, in CSDP, where we are going one step at a time. If you start without knowledge, understanding the business, you will get into debt really fast and you start running away from your creditors. Don't be in a rush to talk about money. First of all, can you come up with a prototype, a sample of what you want to serve your community with, that product or service? So people were holding, driving their cars, right? You have a private car, you just drive, go to work, come back. Somebody came up with an idea called Uber that during your spare time, you can become a taxi driver, even with your private car and pick up one or two people within the community and help them get to their destination, make some money and he gets a cut. He gets 25% of that money. You keep 75. He doesn't own any taxi, but yet he's making money more than most of the taxi unions and has owned more than 75 percent of the taxi business in america are you guys understanding what i'm saying i, I, I need response yes sir yeah so, we can hear you yes sir yes sir no, okay. I'm standing. yes can that you is me? that is human that was a secret that he discovered and tapped into it Another key example is Airbnb. When people were traveling, all they thought about was if I want to move to say Chicago to visit a friend in Chicago, when I arrive, I need to book a, a, a very expensive hotel. An individual said, come on, you can use your house as a hotel to receive a guest. People can come rent a room or rent your entire house, you spend the weekend somewhere else, and then you make some money, guess what? You can be able to save up some money if people come around and maybe rent your house maybe four or five times a month. That is a substantial amount of money that you can put towards paying your mortgage. And then he came up with an idea called Airbnb. People, all they knew was, this is my home, I have to pay the bills, I have to go work so I can pay the bills. But he says you can reduce that cost, make some money with your own house, receiving or hosting a guest somebody who's a traveler that just want to spend a day or two in that city and do business are you guys understanding how you find secrets yeah yes sir. even yes people before the covid 19 people were not using google hangout or google meet or zoom the way we do today but guess what because of the covid 19 People saw the relevance of connecting, associating with one another, and so we jumped on this platform. Look at this. This is the secret. 
at first to have a meeting like this i will have to call you guys we have to get connected get a hall uh maybe arrange and do everything and then we meet in that hall that day but today we are having a meeting with people that can people can join us anywhere around the world and and we have a meeting on how to build our nation this is a secret it was there people never saw this for more than two thousand years more than two thousand years people never saw this so i'm sparking your brains and that is what i'm doing here we, we, we will get to even how to write a business plan how to we will get into all of that let's not rush this process if we try it, it, it will be like the Amazonian movement where people started with no proper preparation and they fail really fast. And of which the whole idea is, first of all, flawed. And, and, and that, is, that is what I'm saying. Prepare well so that when you step out there, I mean, guys, I can talk about those things for like eight hours. Why? Because I've had years of studies looking at the best in this nation. This message is inspired by a book that I just got through it yesterday. Uh, I think yeah, of the day before yesterday. And I keep reading. Sometimes I go back to some of those books. If you've heard about Peter Thiel, that is one of the greatest minds that the world has ever seen. He's the individual that created PayPal with Elon Musk and the rest. Those individuals, they call them the PayPal mafias. Those guys have changed the world. Every individual that came out of that group is a great person today. And that is what you're doing here. As you associate here, there, there should be no one broke person out of this movement. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, none. This should be the, the, the best kept secret in that country. That if you want to make it join CSDP. Everyone that has left from Peter Thiel's group, he was the leader of that whole group. Elon Musk has gone on to create uh, 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 the boring company, Tesla. And, and, and SpaceX. Another group of individuals went on to create YouTube. Another has created LinkedIn. I'm just showing you the trend of people. He's the first investor. He looked at the Facebook, this Facebook that we started connecting. He was the first investors that looked at Mark Zuckerberg and said, this young man, I believe in this idea. This young man at the age of 19, in his early 20s, and said he believes in this idea and invested in Facebook. He has gone on to create Palantir, another company. I'm talking about Peter Thiel. I mean, this is this like people that change the way we see the world today. <laughs> Guys, so I'm, I'm saying this is the way we will change Cameroon. Some people will look at it and I'm like, but how did that happen? It will be a mystery. That's why it's a secret. People, that's why I tell you guys, if people want to really be part of this, they join. Yeah, if they don't want, just let them be. This, this is not for everybody. You, you, you think they had to put a, a, a 100 people in a, in a room to change uh, the wall? No, it was few people that sat down understood that to change a world you need a secret and some of the things in here if you talk to people they don't understand let it go i, I was so glad the message i shared in the groups this morning the, the message was amazing uh i actually i'm here i was hearing from somebody that understands this vision i'm like i've never talked to this person i don't know about their performance in the group but i hear them articulate the thing then i said this person is seeing it because sometimes is it is it lack of understanding why people are not vibrating or moving hard or, or strong with this vision? Is it that people don't get it? Like that that, that has been my, my my contention internally. But here's somebody that I've not met articulate the vision like that, and I'm like he gets it, and, and that is it. And and those who we we need few of those people. Yes, Reverend, you're right. Uh, that's a man I've worked with him for years. And I called him today, we, we have to talk for, for long. And I explained him vividly about the vision. And I asked him that if he has anything to share, let him not have the fear that somebody, I said, he has access to you, he has access to the group so far as he can be able to apply it to this vision. And this is the purpose and what you are driving us into. And so I have to call him, I have to look up in the morning and I talk to everyone that is in the group explaining some of the basics and the notes that are guiding the group and so he, he requested for me that he wants to talk and i say he has the legal right to do so without any fear powerful then that is you see that then that is great leadership because if pastor kingsley can take what 
we are moving with here and explain it to another person and the person gives it back like that that's great leadership pastor kingston good job good job yeah right here yeah. we give people we give people their flowers that 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 is i mean for me to to say things or like you listen and then you articulate it and the next person gives that feedback that's awesome and that is how we change cameroon guys that is how we change cameroon all right if you like this video you're gonna like this other episode and you can watch it by clicking right here